Hey y'all, so today marks the one week anniversary of this alt account that I made. You can tell because the sigil has expired and the seven day experience boost is gone. I'm definitely gonna miss both of those, but I figured I'd just go over um, what I've done, what my thinking has been, what I've gotten, and just my thoughts on the whole experiment so far. So first off, I'm gonna go over to my roster and as you can see, I'm up to six stars, or six four stars already, which is pretty nice. I'm happy with five of them, um, because Nova, Medusa, Gambit, Captain America, and Gilly99 are all kind of champions that I skipped over at the times when they were relevant. I know that there's an argument to be made that Nova has never really been relevant, but I still enjoy him, and I'm glad he was first, so I got a chance to play around with him before I got these others. I'm not happy that I pulled Quake, mainly because the spirit of this account is to try and use underrated, um, or at least underplayed champions, and she does not fit that definition even a little bit. So I'm probably just going to leave her there at rank 1, level 1, for as long as possible. Um, for my three stars, I got the Black Widow and Red Guardian for free, uh, which was really nice just through, like, the movie release. They have both actually been really good for me. I used uh, an Awakening Gem on Red Guardian. Um, Black Widow, I think, I got a Skill Awakening Gem specifically, so I used that on her. And they've both been really helpful. Um, Red Guardian does not do a ton of damage, and it's extremely difficult to keep his trauma up in any kind of realistic fight, but he has really solid block proficiency, he has a good perfect block chance, he doesn't gain buffs, and he's come in handy. Um, Black Widow just does an absurd amount of damage. She has a little bit of ability accuracy reduction. I don't rely on it, but it has helped me in a couple places, but mostly she's just there for absurd amounts of shock damage. Punisher 2099 has been great. He's an excellent power control option, hits decently hard. The standout star for me so far has been Ebony Maw, who I still need to awaken and finish leveling up. Um, I may record later, or as a separate video, some of the fights from the Incursions run that I did with Jacob, and he ended up taking down the Zone 10 boss. It took quite a while, but he plowed through that Ultron eventually, just really reliable champion, especially once he gets um, Black Tongue up. He's not a top Mystic, but I really enjoyed playing him. Nova's solid for damage. I have plenty of thoughts on Nova that I'll cover in a different video, but like I said, I'm glad I pulled him early, and it's been interesting getting to know him. I've mainly stuck to that team of five. I will eventually get some of these others up, um, especially when I do White Magneto. He'll probably end up getting used, because I'm a fan of him. If I pull an Apocalypse, I will mess around with Horseman Gambit. Um, I used Colossus a bit early. I have maxed out my two-star Hulkbuster, but didn't really use him. I think I pulled Punisher 29, like, right after that, and there just wasn't much use to it. Howard may go up at some point. He's fun. Gamora will probably go up out of nostalgia. I used her before her update way back in the day a ton. Um... Yeah, I mean, you can see I've got some other interesting ones here. I do have my my boy Killmonger and my old friend Blade, both of whom I may use if I have to, but I'm going to try and stay away from them if I can, just because I've used both of them so much. Um, I'd love to get Cull Awakened. I'm awaiting the Venom Pool buff, because that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to get Mojo and Yellow Jacket duped, because both of them would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, this account is going well, and then I have some decent two stars, although I'm not really investing in them. And the reason I'm not really investing in them is my one biggest complaint so far, and that is how incredibly precious ISO has been. Like, I would have to use class ISO, and I barely have any in the stash to finish maxing out Ebony Maw. Like, I don't even have my top team at the competitive level for what this account can do. And the biggest reason is ISO. Like, if I was there, I could head over to the Glory Store, 
and pick up another one of these science tier 2 class catalysts. And then as long as I had the ISO, I'd have that full team of three stars maxed plus Nova. That'd be great. But I can't. And the reason is that just duping two stars gives you so little, and most of my two stars aren't even duped yet. I'm still pulling a lot of new profile pictures every time that I open a new champion, and I just am not really duping many three stars. That's fine. Uh, accounts do have to grow. But I think it would be kind of nice... For one thing, if the arena was friendlier. Because I did try doing some arena, but the problem is this one goes up to four stars. This account has a really hard time dealing with maxed out four stars. And it probably will for quite some time. And that means that grinding arena means I'm just holding on until I lose my streak and start over. And that is fairly frustrating. I may do a bit of that, and I still think it's something that new players probably should do. But here's the one ask I would make. If I were to ask a band to change one thing about the early process, I would ask them to put some ISO in the glory store. And the reason for that is because look at how much glory I have. Now, most of that has come from the various compensation packages due to this parry buck. But I have gotten some just from running AQ with this small alliance I'm in. And I don't really have much to spend it on because, like I said, I can pick up some class catalysts, but I'm not in a rush for any of them because I don't have the ISO to capitalize on it. I don't really need team revives or potions. These later catalysts, like tier 4 and 5 catalysts, are useless to me right now. So what would be interesting would be the ability to just pick up some ISO here. If I had some glory left over, if I wasn't able to rank up my champions, maybe I could use glory to at least level them up because that would still allow me to use a resource and take away from somewhere else and I don't think that it would make I don't think that it would make the early game experience less scarce but just a little more balanced anyway let's take a look at so this is what I did as I rushed through act 1 and then pretty much all the way through act 2 really early cuz it's not very hard if anything you do or get from a calendar or a monthly event gives you any three or four stars, even three stars, you're not going to have much trouble here. And then um, these ones that are done, I went back and once I hit level 19 to unlock auto fight, I went back and auto fought them when I had a, um, energy to burn but didn't have time to play. And I would recommend that as well, because as you can see, as you finish these out, 100 units is very valuable at this level. You also get some of these two-star crystals, which eventually will start meaning ISO. So that will have, um, also address the problem I was talking about. Eventually I'll get through here. That'll help me um, continue to develop my three-star roster. Like I said, more units, more catalysts, and eventually more ISO. I will start working on Act 3 as well, because these are pretty important. But because all of that is permanent, what you see over here is what I did first. I did a run all the way through normal. I did a run all the way through heroic. Those rewards were great for me. Um, I started a run through master, but it is a little bit tricky. Look at that recommended team rating. I do not have... I don't really have a team that falls in the middle of that. I think I maybe barely exceed the minimum there. So I've been trying to completely explore Heroic, because that'll give me some more. It'll give me a free 4-star. And as you can see, I'm almost there, 96%. That's going to be soon. That's what I would recommend for anyone else starting off, as long as they have like at least one full week to tackle that. Now next month there won't be a side quest, but for this month's side quest, I've been doing the Master version. For somebody who actually starts off, I'd recommend Heroic, because I definitely had to pull some fancy things to make Master work, and even as it was, I didn't start going in until I hit level 25 and got a full team of 5 champions unlocked. 
So even if you're headed for heroic, that would probably be my advice. Again, this won't apply to next month, but assuming most future months will have side quests, that would be my recommendation. Um, I would pay a little bit attention to these objectives. They were extremely helpful early on. A lot of my advancement came from doing these objectives naturally by running through the story content and just by leveling up. I've been doing the summer event whenever I can. That's given me some minor stuff, um, including at one point that let me go over to the summer canteen and pick up 3,000 four-star shards. That was amazing. I would recommend whatever side event is going on when you pick up an account, do something like this. Look for something that'll help you to jumpstart and just put in a little bit of effort. That first week when I had the sigil was very helpful because obviously this is all locked off to me now and a lot of it was then, but I was able to get some extra premium hero crystals for cheap. I was able to get a stony mastery core for cheap. I was able to get some tier three basic. Yeah, it was extremely helpful and I would recommend that to anyone to take a look at that. Oh yeah, also a guaranteed three star. Another thing that you can do early on is once you unlock incursions, if you can find someone to run those with you and just do whatever's easy enough for you, once you get a few um, champions unlocked, a guaranteed three star or later on a guaranteed four star can be a really big deal. The other thing we need to talk about is masteries. So, as you can see, I haven't spent any units here yet. This was basically just a filler. I worked my way down to Courage because I think that that first point's really nice. I will eventually be focusing on Precision and Cruelty, but you can see that each of those are pretty expensive, so it's going to be a while. In Defense, I recommend rushing Block Proficiency because it helps literally everyone. It helps keep them alive. Salve is okay. The only reason to unlock it, though, is as a gateway to recovery. Any and all healing will be improved. And that may be next for me. They give you parry on your own. The next thing that I focused on was getting dexterity unlocked, because that avoids a ton of damage, and you can start practicing evading specials, which is an incredibly important skill. Next thing I focused on was stupefy, because once you have parry maxed out, if you want to have the stun duration that endgame players have on their stuns, you need Stupefy. So I did that next. Then I did Petrify. This one I think is less important early on, but it's a favorite of mine. Because it means that while you have those nice long stuns, they're gaining less power and healing less. And in the early game when you don't have as many power control or healing control options in your roster, that's kind of a nice stopgap to get you there with whoever you may be using. So like I said, I'm probably going recovery next because eventually that'll let me get to willpower without spending too many units. Then I think I'm gonna come back over here to offense and start working on precision and cruelty. And that is probably where almost all of my units are gonna go. Um, to talk about units, in the early game, what you do not want to do is blow your units on these. Now, you might be thinking, well, the worst this can give me is a 3-star, and you were just saying a guaranteed 3-star is great. It is, but not for 300 units. Because 300 units could be two stony cores towards masteries. 300 units could be 10 full energy refills to get you through Act 2, Act 3, whatever the, um, the event quest is, and that's going to get you probably better rewards. If you spend 10 energy refills clearing content, even at this level, you're likely to get a guaranteed 3-star. And that's all you'll get here. If you're clearing content with that, you'll get other rewards, you'll level up, you'll get ISO, you'll get catalysts, and yeah, you could potentially get a 4-star or a 5-star, but you're looking at pretty small odds, and I just wouldn't recommend that this early, unless you're planning on being a big spender. If you're planning on being a big spender, do whatever you enjoy. 
right? Um, try and make sure you pick up your daily and free crystals as much as possible, even if you don't open them. You open them early to get those first steps objectives, because that gives you more heroes. But I think from now on, I'm just going to hold on to these free crystals until I have need of them. I picked up one tier 4 class catalyst crystal from the glory store, but that was just because of the compensation. That I wouldn't normally bother with that, because I'm not going to be using those for a long time. That's pretty much what's going on here. I've gotten a few of these Grandmaster Crystals, and see, that's what I was talking about. Do whatever the side event is. Get these crystals for free. Don't spend units on them, and that's how you build your roster when you're starting out. The solo crystals have been helpful, but otherwise, you know, just check in here. Use the sigil while you can, and then open whatever you have. So on the subject of spending, if you were going to start a new account and spend, because I have not at all on this, then like I said, I would recommend not going for crystals. I would recommend buying the sigil when the week trial expires, because you get access to pretty much everything in here is a great deal once you unlock it. You'll get the free four-star Scarlet Witch, which if you remember looking at my um, my roster, I only have six four stars and no mystics. She'd actually be huge for me. The other thing you get is this um, solo event, the test of whatever level you're at. As you can see, whoops, wrong one. Those milestones include units, and include shards, and include energy. If I was going to spend on this account, that's probably the most efficient way to spend. The next thing I would do, daily cards are often decent. This Deadpool bundle is okay if you then awaken him just because he has early game regen, but he's not really what he used to be. If I were going to spend, I probably would have picked up the resort pass because that would have doubled what I'm getting there, and I would have picked up this premium level reward thing because by now I would have had one more four star, two more three stars, and whatever I got out of these. And if we take a look at the side event, or sorry, I think it is over here, this whole last one, this summoner uh, camp, is a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't gotten. We're up to 15 milestones so far that I could get by spending a bit that way. So, like I said, if you start an account and you want to spend to get ahead, because that is what games like this are designed to make you want to do, I would recommend the Sigil, I would recommend whatever gets you a lot for a little bit. In general, if you have to wait for the rewards to pay out, it's going to be better value. If you could get something amazing right now, but you probably won't, then the value's not as good, and that would apply to these. I think that's pretty much covered the main stuff. Like I said, I am in an alliance. Um, we're doing, I think, map two right now. As more people join the alliance, that may change, especially as we level up. We're doing alliance war. It's not worth a whole lot at this point, but, you know, a few three-star shards, a few four-star shards, it adds up. And this is basically my only source of glory because nobody's really arena grinding here. And if we check out the season rewards, if we go all the way down here to stone 3, stone 3 would be amazing for me right now, right? So if you start an account, don't worry about ranking up here where the end game players are. All of this down here at the bottom would still be great for you. And so just join an alliance and do something. Even if you're terrible at war, even if you don't clear the map, placing it all is going to help you. And you'll get better because of it. I think that's pretty much all of it here. Um, I told you who I'm going to look at next. It's also going to depend on who I get from my next few crystals. In general, um, like I said, my overall thoughts on this, the early game is in a much better place than it used to be. I legitimately enjoyed pretty much all of my time on here. My only complaint, like I said, is the lack of ISO. I feel like everything else I know how to go get if I want to spend the time and effort to do it. 
And that's a really nice feeling, because that is not how this game used to be. The content is interesting, like, the, there's so many good characters. Pretty much everyone I have ranked here did not exist when I first played this game, or even three years into when I played this game. I'm not sure there's ever been a better time to start playing this game, honestly. And I, that's not just because I'm thoroughly addicted to it, it really is in a good spot. Um, let's see, oh, my one other complaint. I do not understand why the AI is so slow at this level. Like, they will just not throw special attacks. But it's not that they'll just never throw a special attack so you don't have to worry about it, because that would make the game easier. It's also that they don't throw special attacks, and then you charge in and they throw them in your face. Or they just sit there not blocking, and then when you charge, they light attack you in the face. It's like all the worst things about endgame AI with none of the good things. It's very frustrating. And if you are a new player to this game, do you find that easier than what you see on like endgame players completing content? P please tell me in the comments. I am legitimately very curious for that because I can't go back myself six years and imagine what it would have felt like to play against this AI. So maybe it only feels awful because of how long I've been doing this. Either way, if it does feel as bad to you as it does to me, then just know that it gets better. Eventually, you're going to move through content, you're going to level up, you're going to get to content where the AI actually behaves more aggressively and therefore more predictably, you're going to get better at the game, and all of this stuff early on, you're just going to be able to auto-fight it. Because again, auto-fighting didn't exist even a year ago, and it's amazing. Like, get to level 19, unlock it, and any content that's too simple and too easy and too boring for you to be bothered with, you don't have to be bothered with it. Like I said, final thoughts. If you just started out in this game, then I hope that this gave you some guidance on where to take your account and what to focus on. If you're considering picking up this game, then hopefully this convinced you this really is a good time to start. If you are an endgame player like me, and you're just curious to see somebody playing around with champions they don't normally use, well then I hope you've enjoyed it so far, and there will be more content. With the season getting pushed back even further, I'm definitely going to be spending some more time on this account, so look forward to that. Anyway, have a nice weekend. Take care, all.